Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. Christos vos crece. Christos anesti. Dear brothers and sisters, we have come to the fourth Sunday of Pascha, and of course today we commemorate the healing of the paralytic. And I hope that you were listening to both the epistle and the gospel today because they speak not only to the power of Christ and his divinity, they speak not only to his ability to heal any infirmity, to take away any disease or suffering, but they also speak about tradition, the transmission of that authority from Christ to his disciples, in the case of today's epistle reading, to the Apostle Peter. Now, when we read the Gospel reading, we see it related that at the Sheep's Pool of Bethesda, every year people would come waiting for the opportunity to be the first into the waters to be healed. But I don't know that we have stopped to consider the significance of that pool itself. Because that pool was the pool in which the animals that were destined for temple sacrifice were cleansed before they were taken into the temple. And it was believed by those who came to the waters which were stirred by the angel once a year. It was believed, and it was probably the case, that those who came, that person who was fortunate enough to be dipped into those waters, participated by proxy in the temple sacrifice. That pool, dear brothers and sisters, and that stirring of the waters, and that healing of the first person who stepped into the waters, or was helped into the waters in this case, was a type of our baptism. At the time of Christ, many would gather in the hopes that they would be the first, because they would be the only person to be healed. But we, of course, know that all who come to the waters of Christ with faith, all who persevere in keeping to the Orthodox faith, all of us receive healing, not just one. If we stop and look, dear brothers and sisters, at this Gospel reading as well, how many of us have considered the significance of the time that that man had spent coming to the waters? The Gospel says he had been coming for 30 and 8 years. We may take that for granted in a time when lifespans are measured in the decades, and when we can hope to reach 80 years of age, if not more. We have people who are well off talking about reaching the century mark, and perhaps beyond. But this person had been coming for 38 years, which in his time was more than a lifetime. And yet he continued to persevere. He continued in the hopes that somebody would lower him into those waters. The fathers speak of the fact that when Christ asked him, do you desire to be healed? He said, I would, but I have no man to take me into the water. And that word man is significant. He was waiting for somebody to help him into the waters. What we may miss in this Gospel reading is he was hoping that somebody would forego their opportunity to be healed. Perhaps they suffered less grievously than he. Perhaps they were altruistic. But he was hoping that somebody would come and help him into the waters, whether somebody who was ill or somebody who merely wanted to see him healed. And yet for all this time, nobody helped him into the waters until the God-man came. This also is significant for us, dear brothers and sisters, because the same man that helped him into the waters is the God-man who comes to us and offers us salvation, who provides the way for us to be healed, not only physically, and not even primarily physically, but spiritually as well. Of course, we see in the Epistle reading, the Apostle healing Aeneas, and later raising Tabitha from the dead, and we see here also that not only Christ, and not only during his lifetime, but that great healing, that great restoration of his people was transmitted to his disciples, and down through the centuries to us as well, via our bishops. The great lesson of today's Gospel reading, dear brothers and sisters, is of perseverance, but it's also of hope. It's also of faith. It's also having the wherewithal to say to ourselves and within ourselves that if Christ does not answer my prayers today, that does not mean that that is the end of my prayer. That does not mean that that is the end of my request. But if I persevere, if I continue to have faith and I continue in hope, 
then in the fullness of time, and if it is for my salvation, God will bring it to pass. Remember in the Gospels, dear brothers and sisters, when Christ says, if you pray in faith and say unto this mountain, be removed into the ocean, it will be done. The measure of that act is our faith. It's not Christ's mercy and his power, because we know that Christ can do whatever he wishes, but the true measure of that miracle being done is the measure of our faith. That is what we are being called to today, dear brothers and sisters, to remember that. That when we act in faith, God always answers. He may not answer in the way in which we expect or want or hope, but he always answers our prayers. Dear brothers and sisters, may we persevere in hope as well, so that God may grant to us not necessarily that which we desire, but that which is necessary for our salvation, to his glory and our entry into the eternal kingdom. Amen. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind. Always and